All right, next up, we have super fast strand based hair rendering with hair meshes. And I have to say, I'm very proud to announce three of my students upstage here, and they're going to be presenting our work together. Gaurav Bokhari is a just completed his master's in computing and starting his PhD at the University of Utah, and will continue to work on real-time and offline rendering techniques. We also have Eisen Moltavo. Um, Eisen is a principal computer engineer at Raython Technologies in Tucson, Arizona. He recently completed his MS in computing at the University of Utah. And also we have Eli Diaz. Eli Diaz is a PhD student at the University of Utah working on physics-based animation and simulation techniques. For sure. Take it away. Thank you, Jem. <laughs> hair is a crucial visual component of virtual characters. Still, a strand-based hair model is one of the most expensive things to render because of its extreme geometric complexity. A full resolution hair model like this one made by artist Lee Perry Smith contains on the order of 100,000 hair strands and requires many millions of triangles to render. A model like this would take hundreds of gigabytes to store, but not this one because it doesn't actually exist. It's generated on the fly during rendering from a hair mesh. A hair mesh is a volumetric uh, structure that was introduced for modeling hair by Professor Yuxel and included in his hair farm software. We are using it for super fast hair rendering on the GPU. 100,000 hair strands are generated during rendering from this hair mesh using mesh shaders. Turns out this is so much faster than the traditional way, which is pre-computing the strand-based hair model and then rendering it. In our case, the hair strands are never stored. We generate them render them, and then throw them away. The entire hair groom is, is defined by the hair mesh and a bunch of procedural styling parameters. This also makes it super cheap to switch between different hairstyles or tweak the hairstyles on the fly. Eisen, can you tell us how we can style the hair strands? Yes, I can. What you see on the screen is something very similar to a traditional, very simple hair groom coming from a DCC tool like Maya or Blender. If you want to change the style, you need to go back to your tool, restyle, re-export, re-import into your game engine. But what if we can do this directly in our game engines? This is exactly what we built. As you can see on the UI here, we implemented a very few common operations for styling. We have clump, curl, freeze, kink, and fuzz. Of course, we haven't implemented all the available hairstyling functions, but if you want to add your custom one, it is very easy and straightforward to do so. Graph, let's make this a little bit more interesting by adding kink. Let's do it. So you can see we can play with the strength parameter to add more kink to the hair. Also, if we want to, we can isolate the style to be just closer to the tips. God, I wish I had hair to style it like this. A typical hair groom is hundreds of megabytes in size. Our system only needs kilobytes to define one hair mesh. This means that between the memory of a single typical contemporary hair groom, we can store 100,000 unique hair models. We just need to store the hair mesh and these few parameters. These are some quick styles we created with this tool. With this technology, it is easier than ever to experiment and isolate and play with hair styling. I can't wait to see what the creative community can do with this. But not only artists, just imagine the possibilities that a few simple controls in your games can open for gamers and the creative and custom hairstyles they can do for their in-game characters. Ellie, now that we have hair styling, how can we make it come alive? Come alive with hair meshes, that's not just easy, but super fast. Hair meshes allow us to animate the strands and move them around. Watch how our model is moving with our mouse and the hair is responding accordingly. But these animations are handled by animating the hair mesh alone. The, our hair mesh is actually simulated using a precision-based dynamic simulation that maintains the shape and form of the original hair mesh, even recovering the shape after intense simulation. Since our strands are generated on the fly, they just follow the shape of the hair mesh. But can we do more? Here we have a Utah teapot, a Utah teapot model. Let's put some hair on it. 
<clears throat> Watch how it moves around our empty world. I think it looks a little lonely. Can we add some friends? Maybe a couple more? How about a dozen? How about a couple more dozen? <laughs> Gaurav, how many teapots can we possibly have? A lot more. With our system, we can render hundreds of teapots. <laughs> oh my gosh, the teapots just keep falling. The teapots don't have full resolution hair meshes, right? They, they have to be instantiated. Absolutely not. What you're seeing here, uh, let me prove that these are actually full resolution strand models. Let's take a closer look. As you can observe, each teapot here has 20,000 hair strands. And overall, total, you can see 4 million strands rendered currently in front of you. But that means a quarter billion triangles. We can't possibly do that, right? Absolutely not. What you're seeing here is just a fraction of the amount. As we're doing strand-level rendering, we can actually deploy a clever LOD techniques to not only change the curve details, but the strand counts based on the camera distance. But what about shadows and hair color? Shadows are super fast. Even for a large scene, since we're doing strand-based rendering, we can approximate opacities of each hair's fragment and render volumetric shadows. And for hair color, we can actually simulate light multiple scattering using state-of-the-art techniques like dual scattering approximation. Wow, we've seen beautiful hair models from this stage before. And now, for the first time, we can show you hundreds of them in the same scene. With our super fast hair rendering system, there's no excuse for not having more full resolution, dynamic, customizable hairstyles for every game character, no matter how large your scenes are. Thank you. That was a lot of hair and a lot of teapots. <laughs> so somebody asked me, why put hair on a teapot? Why not? 